Today, I get to talk to another casting crew member from my favorite movie, Salem's Lot. Today, I'm interviewing Mara Alexandru. Let's get to it. Well, friends, it is my honor and privilege to welcome Mara Alexandru. Mara, thank you so much for hanging out with us. This is amazing. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. <laughs> thank you. Very, thank very you. cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, just to let you know, uh, Sam and I and, and our friend Ben, we are absolute Salem's Lot junkies where it's our favorite movie of all time. And so, yeah. And I've got my Barlow and Stricker and T-shirt. So to be able to talk to you, yeah, and just get some real experience. It's really amazing. So anyway, um, I wanted to start by asking you, can you just tell us about the process of how how you got the role on the movie? Well, um, it all started a long time ago. <laughs> My father um, was uh, a high level executive in Hollywood for decades. Wow. And okay. so that certainly opened a lot of doors for me because it's a very nepotistic business. Hmm. Um, but I, you know, I did work, I did have my own, you know, on my own, in my own business, frankly, I would just, you know, I would um, qualify for small bit parts and so forth. And I've worked as a um, production assistant as mm -hmm. and acting and, you know, lots of different things within the industry. Uh, my father was the production manager on Salem's Lot. Oh, wow. And yeah. Okay. And um, my husband at the time was the costumer, the wardrobe man. So wow. it was kind of a family affair. And um, and I was uh, David Soul's stand-in, actually. Okay. Believe it or not. Okay. And I know you think, ooh, a woman for a man, but I was blonde and tall, and so was he. And that's all they really look for, for stand-ins. Right. And so it was, you know, part of the crew for the entire shooting of, of, the, of the film and, or the series, two-part miniseries. Yes. And, um, and I just, you know, they, they did a couple of uh, screen tests for, yeah. for the role, and, and I got it. Nice. Amazing. Yeah. Cool. It's it's interesting you mentioned that. My daughter worked on The Walking Dead for about five years until they oh. wrapped up the show. So she's been a stand-in for everybody from Maggie to Negan, you name it. So right, um, right. Anyway, just curious, how many takes do you remember doing of bringing the tray in until you drop it and make the loud scream? Was that just <laughs> one off, or did that take a whole day? Yeah. I mean, because oh, that's God. that's that's your claim to fame right there. Yeah. It's crazy, you know. I mean, it's yeah. it's really by my standards, it's a very, very, very small part, but they liked it. So, you know, and um the producer liked it and and in fact he used it in, in a lot of the trailers. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, which was which was cool. But I as I recall, I think it was three takes. Oh, okay. So not a lot of food casualty. No, <laughs> more like meds and syringes dropping. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Lots of that. Yeah. Was was that uh, was that part shot in a hospital or was that a sta a studio? Oh, that was the studio. That was a stage. Sound okay. stage. Uh -huh. I thought so. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, how was it working with Brad Savage? Oh well, he's so, he was so cool. Yeah, he was little. I mean, yeah. yeah, little guy. I mean, they were everybody. The kids were great. Yeah. You know, everybody was great. I mean for the most part, I mean, you know, there's some people who kept more to themselves, but for the most part, I mean, David soul was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, we used to hang out in his motor home. A couple of us, he, he was, you know, he's a, he's a musician too. I'm, I'm sure yeah. you know, yeah. and he would like play songs for us and you oh, know, cool. between takes and stuff. So it was, it was nice. Yeah. Awesome. So nice I, time. I've heard rumors and, and you may have hit on a little bit that you did more on the movie other than just, you know, the nurse part. Is that true? Well, yeah, sort of. I mean, okay. as far as, well, you know, I always helped with production if there was anything I could do, you know, like nothing important as I call it, but, you know, mm -hmm. runner, do this, do that. But I was a stand-in, but also I had, there was a scene, I don't remember what her name was in the movie, but um, it was James Mason's wife. Marjorie who went, Glick. Who played Marjorie Glick, right? Yeah, right. 
And um, of course she was turned into a vampire. And there's a scene with David's soul and they're, they're inside, um, I guess where her body is supposedly lying dead. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she, it's nighttime. So she wakes up Yeah, and they come at her with a scalpel. Yeah, right. right. If you guys right. remember that, because you probably remember more than I do, because you're such fans. <laughs> We've only yeah. seen it like a hundred times. So hundred times, right. and I've seen it probably three. So okay, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I just don't like watching myself in, on film. That's just me, though. Oh, but yeah. you know, it's it way it But so I was her arm. <laughs> wow. So arm. Now, okay. Now that that took a lot of takes. Really? And, yeah, because I mean. And, and in those days, the hours and hours, yeah. because they had to, and I had to go to makeup. They had to do all this body makeup on my arm and they had to create this area on the arm that didn't look like anything was wrong with it. But when the, the scalpel or the knife hit my arm, I had to very discreetly pull a string that would actually oh, make it? it look like the scar. It was like an open cut. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm. So it was the timing between David and myself and also how well the makeup was put on my arm so mm -hmm. that it looked like a real cut and didn't look, you know, made up. Right. So, but, so that was probably, oh my God, that was like a whole afternoon I, it was five, six hours at least. I don't know how wow. many takes, maybe five or six takes. But the thing, I mean, not a ton of takes, but you yeah. got to remember, it's like 45 minutes at least mm -hmm. in makeup every time. And oh, boy, wow. was my arm raw. I bet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember that it was sore for, for a couple of days, but yeah, but we finally got it. So, How was everybody on the set for the most part? Pretty kosher, pretty interactive, or you put... I, I would feel that maybe Lou Aries was maybe the only one that seemed to kind of tuck away and kind of stay away from any gatherings or any kind of, um, oh, I wouldn't say like a wrap up party, but, you know, kind of in between takes, you guys kind of converse or you just kind of waiting as the scripts go. And then when it comes to action, you guys go, you know, I'm just kind of curious how everybody kind of kind of got along or you know did you guys go out anywhere afterwards go out for dinner kind of thing or you just kind of do your own thing um you know Lou Ayers was actually very sweet and very friendly I mean a little bit quiet but my dad had known him from years before and mm. nice man um I mean some of us would just kind of you know it, there were long shooting days okay so people mm -hmm. were tired and um you know it depends if we were on location you know, we'd be a, a lot more together if we were on a sound stage. You know, people go off and do their own thing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so like for example, when we were on location, that's when you know I, I spent more time with David as far as just him playing music or hanging out. And it wasn't every day; it was just you know a few times, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I never really. I mean, she seemed perfectly fine, but I was never really, really got to know Bonnie Bedelia very well. She mm -hmm. was pretty much kept to herself at the time she was uh, dating our director. <laughs> oh, that's brand new to me. Wow. That is brand new. I don't know if I should be out talking about all this stuff. I don't want somebody coming after me, but um, I mean, it is what it is. And everybody <laughs> right. knew about it. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know anything more about that. Just, the, you know, to each his own. That was their business. Mm -hmm. sure. As far as getting into who was married and who wasn't. And if they were, I can't speak to that because it would be hearsay i don't know yeah right. um, but uh, i do recall that um and you know i mean everybody was really friendly i mean i, I got along with everybody i mean george Dezunza was is still one of my most favorite people i i wonder if he's still around what he's doing mm -hmm. and um i've all, often said god i wish i could find him somewhere because we, he was just so personable. It was like, yeah. I've known him all my, my whole life. You know, he's just a really friendly, cool guy. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much that story. <laughs> well, it, it's interesting you mentioned George, because I, I guess I can let the cat out of the bag now. Back in December, early January, Sam and Ben and I were trying our best. And I had messaged you about it 
trying to organize a Zoom cast reunion. Oh, and wow. Yeah. I, I had a couple of people already committed. You know, we had like uh, Lance Kerwin told me he was already he was in completely. And you had said you would do it. And uh, Ron Scribner, Julie Cobb. And we had reached out to all the surviving cast members, including George. Um, and we just didn't really get a big, you know, some responded, hey, can't do it right now. And David Soul is really involved with a lot of projects right now. But uh, then Lance passed away and we were just so sad. And it, it just kind of dwindled down to where we kind of said, we don't really think it's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, well, you know, maybe 10 years ago, if we'd have thought of it. Um, yeah. But we did we did reach out to George. He's a great actor and absolutely pulled off that part of Coley. So, um, well, OK, so you hit, a little bit, you hit on a little bit about hanging out with David Soul. Any interesting stories that you can remember about the actors or the anything that went on during filming well i mean the things that stand out to me are <laughs> well um yeah i don't know if i should mention this <laughs> <laughs> yeah i get it <laughs> yeah. um let's just say there was those were in the days of a lot of partying mm -hmm. okay? there was a lot yeah. of partying and um, I mean, we had to get a job done, right? So right. we had to make a movie. So oh, right. there was partying, but you know, my father was the one who brought the pulled the reins in a lot because he was production manager. So mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. things got had to get done and had to get done in on in a timely manner and on budget and not go beyond budget, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I mean, yeah, there was some partying going on, and um, I'll just say that. And uh, but okay. Yeah. But nothing, nothing that stands out. I mean, we want, we all worked hard to get it done. That that's, you know, that's basically it. Nothing that stands out in particular. Um, we, we were kind of, kind of like a big family, especially when we went on location because we were on location mm -hmm. for a while. Right. And um, so that that's, that's mostly it. I get nothing mm -hmm. too juicy. I'm sorry, but <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. This is great. Were you in Ferndale a lot or were you mainly on the sound stages back over in Burbank? Because I can't see you doing much in Ferndale since most of the exterior shots were filmed outside. Mm -hmm. So just curious if you were in Ferndale during any of those two months that they filmed before they got back to L.A. and did the interior. Oh, yeah. I was there the whole time because remember, I was uh, uh, David Standen as well right. as having that bit okay. part. So, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that was that was kind of neat. You know, we stayed yeah. in these little hotels and, and yeah. um, you know, we'd so, sometimes what well, we need on set too, you know, we had caterers and all that. And then we also, you know, there were little places in town and some of that's a little fuzzy because it's been a while, but, but yeah. 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 Well, I, I don't want to speak too early, but um, we, we, you know, next, the summer of 2024 is the 45th anniversary of when filming began. Oh my and, God. Uh, yeah. Oh, stop. It makes me feel like I'm a Methuselah here. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I, I will tell you that I was, I was only 10, really. I was only 10. I yeah. Know. I was eight when it came out. So we're the same age almost. Um, <laughs> but we, we have thrown around the possibility of trying to do something in Ferndale next when, when that comes around next summer. So maybe that's something you might want to think about penciling in on your calendar. We'd love to see you out fun. there. It would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it would be great. Um, I was curious, did you, so you, I know you were around for a lot of the film. Were you there when they filmed uh, the window scenes? Oh yeah. That was all, that was, yeah, that was all on the soundstage. I was right. there for all of it. Oh wow. That's so cool. And it was spooky to see, even though you knew how they did it. Right. It right. still right. was scary to see that. I think that was done so well considering oh, yeah. the time. You know, you think, you know, we're back in the 70s, right? I mean, I think mm -hmm. it was just done incredibly well. Yeah, I actually, I actually met Ron Scribner and I asked him, I said, how was it in your mind to be able to think backwards? Because yeah. when he's hit the window, he has to put his fingers on the window and pull back mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. do this method. So when That's they right. play it backwards, it looked like he was tapping. And mm -hmm. that was fascinating to see in his mind how he had to create that and how Toby had to kind of walk him through that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's one of my favorite, if not my favorite scene of the whole movie, because you have to yeah. think backwards. Yeah. 
Exactly. From the neck and then levitating and being pulled yeah, back. Just like, yeah, and then he's on this yeah. like really thin, um, not a two by four, but something uh -huh. kind of like that, right? Yeah. A little wider right. and, and it's mm -hmm. like balance and make it look real. And yeah, yeah. that's incredible for that time. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and you know, so I'm curious because when I was eight and I watched this, and I've said this many times. So people that have heard me say this, they know what I'm going to say. Um, the, that scene is really the first scary scene in the movie with Ron Scribner. And so that is what absolutely dented my brain, terrified me as an eight year old. Um, <laughs> but it's a combination of the music with everything It's done so simply but when that music comes in and it's doing those chromatic builds and here comes his face through the smoke. Oh my gosh. It was amazing. Yeah. And that was scary. That was super scary. The other scene that I always thought was well done um, was uh, Lou Ayers in his, in his house yeah. with um, Jeff sitting in the chair. Uh -huh. Teacher. You know, yes. I mean, that freaked me out even though I knew exactly how it was done and I know how the actor, actors were struggling with their contact lenses and you know all the rest of it but he did that really well oh. and you know only Toby Hooper can can direct that kind of a scene because he's got that you know yeah. that mind but yeah wow just I think it's wonderful that we're connecting and still hearing details that we still don't know about. And goodness knows what else is still hasn't been brought to the table, either with photographs or interviews. I mean, that's this is such a cult following, Myra, that that it's 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 hard to explain. It's not like it won how many Emmys and it's got this worldwide status. It's just this little underground bunker of a film that I think between Danny and Ben and several people on YouTube have felt this this need to sustain it, to bring it, it to younger audiences and to keep this thing afloat because it is in its own right very unique. It is not an everyday flick. It's not an everyday thing that you'd sit down and watch. It has its own legacy. It has its own solid ground that we still obsess and nerd about. Well, so, you know, it warms my heart to hear that because... Um, my dad worked 40 years in the film industry and he goes back to, you know, just major films and productions of, you know, the forties and the fifties and, and, you know, he's got a, oh, an IMDb, IMDb, if I could say that IMDb page <laughs> <laughs> and I need to ad actually address because there's things missing. Um, but, you know, he worked really hard mm -hmm. and I have, absolutely wonderful, wonderful stories of the people he introduced me to and from, you know, anywhere from Paul Newman to Fred Astaire to really a lot of greats. And that's why if you see in the back here, I have on, on my uh, Zoom here, I've got Life, Love and BS because it's a pod, uh, not a podcast. It's a, a blog that I started in 2020 with COVID. Oh, and okay. so I started to document and I have to get back to it. I started to document my childhood growing up with in Hollywood and mm -hmm. everything that my father did and the movies we worked on. And there's certainly a, there's a good blog in there with Salem's lot. In fact, there might be two. And sure. um, it's the way I keep those memories alive and his memory alive Yeah, because it was such a big part of my youth, you know? So I yeah. figured, well, you know, my son may want this one day. There may mm -hmm. be others and, you know, I can't, I, I'm very pleased and, and a little bit surprised that there's such a huge cult following, but very yeah. happy about it. I found out just the other day that another film my dad did, um, two of them actually, Towering Inferno and The Poseidon Adventure, mm -hmm. because he was big into the um, disaster film genre with Irwin Allen for a period of time. They were very close friends, but there's huge cult followings for those. Yeah. And I've, and I found this on Facebook or something. And they're like, oh, we know who your dad is. I'm like, you do? Oh, okay. I mean, and wow. it's like, oh, we're so honored you're here. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, you guys. I mean, to me, because I worked in the industry for like 25 years, mm -hmm. honored to meet somebody is like Fred Astaire and Paul Newman. Right. Honored Absolutely. to meet me is like, well, thank you. That's very kind. But I don't have, you know, 
<laughs> tons of, of uh, film history. I mean, I was born in Hollywood, totally raised that way. Wow. But yeah. I didn't have the notoriety, like who's Mara, you know, but but I'm honored. I'm honored because of the connection and the, and the memories I have that keep all, the, all of those films and my dad alive. So it's an wow. honor to be with you guys, too. Thank so. you so much. I, yeah. I think I have one final question, and that is sure. um, just because we are super nerds. Do you through the connection of your dad and, and your husband at that time, do you know of any things, props, anything that might still exist from the movie? And the other question is, can I have it? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Give it to me right now. Yes. Um, you know, that's interesting. I don't have anything. And mm -hmm. oh, I would just do anything to have something myself. Yeah. Um Sadly, I had quite a few things from different films um, and they were lost in a fire. Oh, oh that no. was, yeah, that was in the 80s. That oh, that no. took me years to 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 get over, really, because even oh. my dad's director's chair. So it was. Oh, sorry. Anyway, thank you. But I however, I'm still quite good friends with my ex-husband and I can ask him if he's got anything. I'm not going to hold out a lot of hope on that, but. He may have something, and I'll ask him. Thank you so much for taking the time out to do this. Yes. This definitely means a lot to us and a lot of the Salem's Lot fans that we do have on YouTube. So thank you yes, very thank much. Thank you. This has been great. Amazing. It's amazing. Well, it's my pleasure. Uh, love meeting you guys. Keep it Thank's keep sweet. it going. Keep it alive. It sure fills up my heart. And check out loveandbs.com. Absolutely. <laughs> my my blog. <laughs> we will. I'll be sure to put a link below to that. Oh, thanks. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. And thanks for you having me. You too. Thank you thank so, much. so much. On behalf of Sam and myself, we want to sincerely thank Mara for her time today. It was so great to get to hear all about the filming process and all of her experiences. I'll see you on the next episode. But until then, I wish for you and your family and friends, peace and blessings. I'll see you soon.